Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce you to Dr. Imtiaz Ismail Suleiman for the presentation of the Chancellor's Medal. Dr. Imtiaz Suleiman is the founder of the non-governmental humanitarian organization Gift of the Givers that has, since its inception in 1992, provided aid to needy people and communities locally and in 42 countries, both in Africa and globally. Born in Porchefstroom, Dr. Suleiman trained as a medical doctor at the University of Natal, qualifying in 1984. Throughout his career, he has been involved in civic associations, religious organizations, and early on became active in the field of humanitarian aid. Under the dedicated leadership of Dr. Suleiman, the gift of the giver's activities include projects such as the provision of emergency medical services in situations of violent conflict and war, disaster relief, primary health care clinics, feeding schemes, water purification and water wells, distribution of blankets, clothing and food parcels, provision of bursaries and educational support for the underprivileged, agricultural self-help schemes, job creation, counseling services, drug rehabilitation, and HIV AIDS skills development, and life-altering workshops. In recent years, Dr. Suleiman has also become increasingly involved in mediation in violent conflicts and negotiations for the release of hostages. Through his work, Dr. Suleiman contributes daily to the international ideal of pursuing peace, security, and human dignity. He works tirelessly and fearlessly to provide relief to people caught up in the scourge of war and national disasters, regardless of who these people are and where they suffer. Dr. Suleiman is the personification of the ideal South African identity. Someone who has committed his life and profession to the improvement of the human condition. He serves as an example of the extent to which education, together with a principal stance, can make a difference in the lives of thousands of people who are entangled in dehumanizing and life-threatening circumstances. Dr. Suleiman personifies the values and ideals of community engagement, integrity, and social justice in a visible manner and on a daily basis through his civic commitment which transcends the barriers of race, religion, class, nationality, and geography. Dr. Suleiman serves as an inspiration to all of us, showing through his life's mission and work what it means to be truly human. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to present the Chancellor's Medal to the candidate. I hereby present the Chancellor's Medal to Dr. Imitias Ismail Suleiman. The Chancellor, Deans, Deputy Deans, Principal, Members of Senate, Staff, Dr. Reddy, <coughs> Professor Maxi Skuman, who did the citation for me, the Faculty of Humanities and Faculty of Law, thank you very much for nominating me for this Chancellor's Medal. I'd like to go back and first congratulations to all the students and to your parents for what you've achieved. Your achievement could never be without the hardship, the dedication, and the struggle of your parents. And before I actually start with what I'm going to say, I like students to remember, because many of us, once we get to the high life, we get our degrees, we make progress, many of us forget where we came from. We forget the struggle of the pension old lady, the granny who took care of seven and eight children, who gave up her pension money so that you could be here to study or go to school. We get caught up in the materialistic life, we forget our values, we forget our systems, and it's only about chasing material values, and we forget all the principles and values. All the education, all the technology, 
and all the learning in the world is useless if we lose our values, our social, social virtue, and our selfless service, especially to parents, kit and kin, neighbors, and the communities where we come from. So don't forget where you come from. Remember that that is your beginning, your humble beginning, and people stood by you. To be a great person, you go back to where you started, and you start off with those who put you where you are today. You didn't come here on your own. You're not too clever. Everything comes by the grace of God Almighty. So I want students to remember that and never forget your parents. You should be bowing to them for what they've done for you to be where you are today. And what I'm going to say, we will learn the principles and values of life. This Chancellor's Medal is not because of me. It's because of the teams that work with me, it's because of my family sacrifice, and it's because of a great teacher. It was the 6th of August, 1992. I was in Turkey, in Istanbul. I met a spiritual teacher, a Sufi master, in a Muslim holy place. What was amazing about that holy place is that there were people of all cultures, all religions, Christians, Jews, Hindus, Muslims, and even people who said, we don't believe, but they were not judged. They were welcomed with open arms, and everyone was shown love and compassion. It was something very amazing. I fell in love with the teacher the moment I saw him. It was a spiritual connection. That same night at 10 p.m., after a religious ceremony, in the Sufi tradition, we call it zikr. Zikr is the recitation of God's names in a certain combination. We have the names in Arabic, but in English, we'll say the eternal, absolute, one and only, preserver, loving, kind, compassionate, merciful. Or God's names mentioned in Arabic, in Arabic, in a certain combination. After that ceremony, the teacher looks across the room at me. Whilst he's connecting with my eyes and my soul, he's connecting upwards also. So I can see that whilst he's looking at me, he's somewhere else at the same time. He tells me in fluent Turkish, and I don't understand a word of Turkish. But I understood every single word that he said. And he said, my son, I'm not asking you. I'm instructing you to form an organization. In Arabic, the name will be Waqful Waqifin. Translated, it means gift of the givers. You will serve all people of all races, of all religions, of all colors, of all cultures, of all classes, of any geographical location, and of any political affiliation but you will serve them unconditionally. You will not expect anything in return, not even a thank you. In fact, in what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life, expect to get a kick up your back. If you don't get a kick up your back, regard that as a bonus. He said, serve people with love, kindness, compassion, mercy, and remember, the dignity of man is foremost. So if someone is down in the ground, don't push him down further. Hold him and lift him up. Wipe the tear of a grieving child. Say words of good counsel to a widow. Or caress the head of an orphan. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Provide food to the hungry and water to the thirsty. And in everything that you do, be the best at what you do. Not because of ego, but because you're dealing with human life, human suffering, and human emotions. How would you like somebody to respond to you if you were on the other side in that position? If you can honestly answer that question, then you would know how to serve people. He went on to say, Khairunas mayanfaunas, translated meaning, best among people are those who benefit mankind. And he repeated it three times. He said, my emphasis is on the word mankind, not Muslim not Arab, not Indian. You serve all of creation unconditionally. And then he went on to say, my son, remember the most important thing in all this. Remember that whatever you do is done through you and not by you. And everything in life you achieve is only by the grace of God Almighty and not by our sheer genius. Because even that is given by him. We cannot manufacture that. 
That's the most important lesson you need to learn in life, brothers and sisters. And then he went on to say, now go back to your country. This is an instruction for you for the rest of your life. And that's how it started. I just mentioned two or three projects. The first project is related directly to the city. In Roslyn, there's a company called Afrit Fund of Vetering Engineering. I went to Turkey at the time of apartheid. We were prejudiced, black against white, Christian against Muslim. We were in different areas. Our minds were blocked. Everybody didn't like everybody. But when I went there and I saw people of all religions harmoniously getting along with each other, the blocks were removed. And I came back to South Africa and I found Johan van der Vieteren, African Engineering. I said, Johan, we're going to build the world's first containerized mobile hospital to take it to the war in Bosnia. Because Johan had built a theater, an X-ray and a sterilization unit for Armsco. And I saw that at a show in August 92. And in 93, sorry, in November 92. And in 93 February, I said, we're going to build this for the war in Bosnia. We went around and I told Johan, Johan, I can't guarantee I'm going to pay you. I'm an NGO. We just started. We're not a business. So even if I give you the contract, you may make all the expenses, but I may not be able to pay you. He's a Christian, Africana, white man. We have prejudices. We're against each other. We have perceptions and stereotypes. And he tells me, have faith. Christian guy telling the Muslim guy, have faith. And I said, Johan, but I have an obligation to pay you. He says, my friend, I know you will pay me. But if you cannot pay me, this gift is from me to you. We need to open our minds. We need to remove the blinker visions. And in that spirit, we went and we built the world's first containerized mobile hospital in South Africa, in Pretoria, and people don't believe in Africa. Africans don't believe in Africa. We don't believe in Africa. We want to look into the north for everything. We don't believe in ourselves, in our skills, and our gifts. But we built the world's first containerized mobile hospital in South Africa, in Africa, and we took it to Europe. And in Europe, what did they say? When CNN filmed the hospital, it said the South African mobile hospital is comparable to any of the best hospitals in Europe. That was in 93. Engineering of South Africa, skills of South Africans, products of this university and other universities in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, take your studies seriously. We make an impression in the world wherever we go because of our skill and our commitment and one more other great gift that we have that many people don't have. We have the spirit of Ubuntu. When South Africans go across, you know what they tell us? When we touch the patients, when we examine the patients, we carry the patients and we kiss them. You know what many people tell us? You know what the other teams that come here? They stand far. They don't come near us. They're afraid to touch us. What kind of a people are you? Not only did you examine us, you hug us, you kiss us, you wipe the nose of the dirty baby, and you show love and compassion. What kind of a people are you? There's two more stories I'd like to finish. I'm giving you in short. The one was in 2005, again related not only to this city, but specifically to this university. October 8, one of the biggest earthquakes ever hits Pakistan, 9.0 on the Richter scale. It doesn't wipe out one city. An earthquake normally wipes out one city. It wiped out an entire region, from Rawalpindi to Islamabad to the Kashmir border. The whole Northwest Frontier province was gone. 400 villages were affected. People sank into the ground. We took the team, teams across to Pakistan. The Pakistan military came to me. And you think the Afrikaners are for cramped? The Pakistani army is more for cramped than the Afrikaners. He looks at me, the military comes to me, and he says, do you mind not going to the earthquake? So I said, fine. We won't go to the earthquake. My team said, what did we come for? I said, you don't understand what this man is saying. I said, can you give me a hospital in Rawalpindi where we can treat the patients? The military guy looks at me. He says, you understand? I said, of course I understand. So they ask, what is he talking about? I said, what the man is telling you, that everybody is dead. Everything is destroyed. Everything is gone. There's nothing you're going to do in the mountains. 
We can only send teams to stabilize those who are alive and come back to Rawalpindi and treat them in this hospital. They gave us the content, can, con, con, cantonment hospital of Rawalpindi. When I walked inside, there was the smell of gangrene. Children were on beds with no water, no IV lines, stinking, no parents, no family, no food for two or three days. Kids lying in disastrous condition and needing gang uh, amputation. And I asked the military guy, is this a killing field? What is this? He looked at me. He was shocked. The superintendent of the hospital said, we were shutting this hospital down. We can't use it. I said, you guys are crazy. There's nothing wrong with this hospital. If I give you a shopping list, can you bring this for me in 24 hours? They said, yes, we will do it. In, 20, in less than 24 hours, a South African team converted a hospital that was closing into a 400-bed emergency hospital, where we did 75 operations a day and saved countless lives in the Pakistan earthquake. When there was no equipment, when there were no proper drills, orthopedic drills, the medical teams walked forwards. The Afrikaner guy said, the Burma plan. And they found a way of getting with a black and decker drill doing orthopedic procedures. And because of that, the Pakistani government gave us a presidential award. The only organization in Africa to get that. But there was something more significant than that. I told you I'm going to relate something to this university. In December, around Christmas time, a lady from this university called Karina Ekstian, physiotherapist, gave up her religious time in Christmas. Christian lady went to Pakistan, a Muslim country. She's a specialist in physio in spinal rehab. And she went and gave three to four weeks of her time as a volunteer in Pakistan. She had the skill. She had the Ubuntu. She didn't worry about stereotypes. She had compassion. She didn't worry about color, culture, religion, or class. And she came from this university. And when she finished off, many people were walking. And when she left, the patients cried, the families cried, the doctors cried, and even the military cried. Ladies and gentlemen, we South Africans can do great things across the world. We need to believe in ourselves, give freely, have the spirit of Ubuntu, and give all the values that the university teaches us. Go and study further. Be the best at what you can be, but not for yourself. For your family, for your community, for your villages, for your country, for the continent, for the world, and for God Almighty. Thank you very much. Thank you.